The graphical analysis shows us partial equilibrium with the European Union suppliers, who are mainly French overseas departments, Martinique and Guadeloupe, and also the Canary Islands. So we follow the supply curve, and at the support price, which I call P subscript EU, we have at that support price the quantity that will be supplied by European producers. The area of imports will be subdivided into at least three groups. So I'm going to draw vertical lines and make three different quantity restrictions from the imports. The numbers that are given in the analysis are 854,000 tons from the European suppliers, 857.7 thousand tons from traditional APCP suppliers, and thereafter we have what are called third countries or dollar countries. These dollar countries would produce up to 2 million tons. They were actually sharing this duty-free for non-traditional ACP countries and uh, with a tariff for the dollar countries. So we're saying that the non-traditional ACP countries could supply up to 857.7 thousand tons, but if they couldn't, the overall quantity that was being allocated to the non-traditional plus the dollar countries was 2 million tons. So if we did some percentages here, we're at 1.7 million from domestic producers plus ACP, and then 2 million from non-traditional ACP and dollar countries. So that is about 3.7 million. 1.7 over 3.7 is 46%. So let's say 45% of the bananas were going to come from traditional producers, whether they are European producers or ACP producers, and 55% was going to come from non-traditional producers, including non-traditional ACP producers and dollar countries. Notice that the dollar countries supplied more bananas generally than the European producers and the traditional producers. And we see that the Caribbean is supplying 10% of Europe and Africa is supplying 14%. So that is 24% from Africa and the Caribbean. All of these are not traditional suppliers. We saw that approximately 22% of Europe's bananas were going to come from traditional ACP countries. So we are in the ballpark with the Caribbean and Africa at 24% approximately. The rest of the story then says that for the 30% of imports supplied by ACP, traditional ACP countries, they would get to supply it duty-free. The last point we mentioned is that the dollar allocation was going to be divided into traditional traders from the dollar countries, two-thirds of it, established operators of Europe or traditional ACP bananas also got a portion of the dollar allocation, 30%, and newcomers could get 3.5% of that allocation. The allocation of dollar quotas to the ACP companies was designed to cross-subsidize their expensive bananas and strengthen their position in relation to the dollar companies. At the same time, it led the dollar companies to invest in ACP countries to allow them to establish rights to future dollar quota allocation within this category. So we're saying that it led Chiquita, Dole, Del Monte, etc. to invest in ACP countries, and this would only make sense if it was duty-free of the amount allocated to dollar countries, a portion of this could come from non-traditional ACP countries duty-free. Established operators of the European community and or traditional ACP banana producers could get a portion of that quota that went to dollar countries. And this was to allow the dollar countries to invest in the banana industry in these countries. Since it's cheaper to produce the bananas in Central and South America, then it had to be the case that the bananas from the Central and South America region were tariffed, but those from the ACP countries were not, in which case that would be the incentive for the dollar countries to invest in the ACP countries because they could actually make more profit that way. A very complicated story, which clearly was discriminatory. And this is why Chiquita could win the case, because the system was way too complex and exclusionary.